G'day guys, my name is Paul and I'm with Noshka Prepper. Thanks for joining me in this video. Today we're going to go through how to select the right shoes for you. If you're a prepper and you're looking at potential situations that might be a disaster or just looking at getting out of your house quickly or just having a good solid pair of shoes for whatever might end up coming your way. So today we're going to look at some decent quality shoes and we're going to break them up into three categories. Your light shoes, your medium, your heavy, and then your more specialized types of shoes. So if you're going to be selecting shoes and you're expecting to walk a lot more on trails or, or walk in the cities, then you're looking at lightweight type shoes. Normally they're going to be synthetic or a mix of lighter leather and synthetic materials. And you're going to be somewhat restricted with these types of shoes to lighter pack weights. And bear in mind, if you're a heavier guy and a bigger guy like me, you may also be restricted somewhat in these shoes because the rubber that is used in the heels here will crush out over time. So if you're a bigger guy and you're more active and you're likely to be wearing a, a backpack, then this isn't really going to be a, a good solution for you long term. If you're just looking at walking around in the city or on trails and, and you've got some idea where you're going and the terrain is quite flat, then light shoes like this are going to be good. So these are just a pair of Timberlands. Now, one of the things you have to notice is normally you're going to have uh, less stability with this here your soles are going to be less aggressive so you're going to have less grip as well so these are much better suited for kind of city walking and and more suburban type uh, type environments the scarpers here these are a medium weight shoes so these are mid weights these here have a much much more aggressive tread pattern they've got a, a thicker tpu sole so they they're less cushioning when you walk they have better quality materials in the sense that they are thicker, they are stiffer, and therefore it offers you more support on your foot. Now, these are going to give you much better stability. Uh, one of the main reasons is because they have a heavier duty shank in the actual, um, in the actual sole of, of, of the shoe. So inside the shoe here, you've got a, usually a steel piece, or these days it can be carbon fiber, and it just provides more rigidity in the foot. So these are heavier duty uppers as well. So these are much more robust. So you're less prone to roll your ankle if you're walking on unstable terrain. Now, these are a little bit heavier than the Timberlands, but these Scarpers here are much better suited for more mountainous terrain. And these have a little bit of insulation, so they'll suit you better in colder climates, but these by no stretch are a winter shoe. Now that brings me then to the uh, alphas that I have here, which are a very, very good quality shoe. Now, these here would be what I would consider to be a, a heavy, uh, heavyweight shoe. These are more in line with like hunting boots and military style boots, although these are probably a little bit more deluxe. Here you can see that you've got the waterproof lining here, that you've got the rubber around the toe, and that rubber extends all the way around the boot, meaning that this boot is going to be quite waterproof. You've got full grain leather uppers, and it's fully impregnated as well. So these are going to be much, much more durable, and these have far greater water resistance than these other two types of shoes, but it comes at a cost of heavy, uh, heavier weight. So here you've got a much more aggressive tread pattern on the bottom as well, and these are far less cushioning because they're, they're more concerned with having more stability than they are in, um, in being comfortable on your feet when, when you take a, take a walk on bitumen because they're not really designed for bitumen and concrete uh, use at all. These are require these require wool socks. So part of part of the equation if you're looking at, at heavier duty shoes like this is you need to consider which socks you're going to wear and you need to make sure that you have the right selection of socks. So these alphas, these are fantastic. These shoes here, these are Kamix and these are designed for winter use. Now, I've had these Kamex here for over 10 years. They have a separate lining inside here that you can pull out. These will suit you well, even down to about minus 30, minus 40 degrees Celsius in the winter. I use these when I'm snow blowing and when I'm shoveling the driveway. These are fully impregnated. Uh, they're a combination of leather and synthetic. These aren't really the type of boots you're going to be going long distances in, but if you're looking at getting out of Dodge and you have a snowmobile or you're looking at trekking long distances in freezing cold weather, these shoes here are amazing for that. But as just a general type of boot to get around in, I wouldn't really recommend these type of specialized shoes. 
So when you're picking shoes, there are a few things that you need to consider. First of all, you need to consider the type of environment you're going to be walking in. If you're just looking at getting around in the city or getting out of the city as quickly as possible, there's no reason to get these kind of shoes here. They're much, much heavier. And half a kilogram on your foot is equivalent to three kilograms on your back. So it's not a very good trade-off having really heavy duty shoes on your feet if all you're looking at doing is just getting about in the city. So you need to understand the environment and the season that you're going to be walking around uh, during. And that will also dictate whether you get a high cut, a mid cut or a low cut type of shoe. Uh, some people don't like high cut shoes because they say it promotes weak ankles, but if you're in rough terrain, then I think it's, um, I think it's a good insurance policy to have. After that, you really need to consider the weight. If you're going to be in mountainous terrain or you're walking on tracks and, and you're walking through swampy areas and, and you're not really sure what you're going to encounter, then I would not recommend going with something like trail runners or lightweight shoes, simply because they're not going to give you the stability when you're going on really rough terrain or rocky, um, rocky type terrain. So I would be looking at something that's in the mid-weight to your uh, heavyweight type of shoe. Then after that, you have to really consider the traction. If it's going to be damp conditions, if it's going to be on rocks and possibly slippery type environments, you really need to consider getting something that has more aggressive tread. So aggressive tread is, is going to save you from slipping over and possibly injuring yourself. So again, that will be your mid-weight and your heavyweight type shoes will have the much more aggressive tread pattern. After that, you have to look at your materials and durability. If you're just going to be left with one pair of shoes, you want it to last a year to two years. And the, if this is the only pair of shoes you have, you really want some good quality shoes. Now, I look at Vibram soles as being the standard. So these shoes here, you can see it's got the yellow mark there. These are Vibrams. These are Vibrams as well. So these are the standard for good quality soles and good, good quality tread on the bottom of the shoe. So, so these are TPU uh, rubber and they're going to last you a very long time. So with regards to the uh, materials and durability, you have to consider the maintenance that's also involved. Leather shoes, generally, uh, they, they will require some maintenance and, and a little bit of topping up with the, um, the impregnation chemicals that you have to treat them with. But I find that leather tends to be a little bit more forgiving on the foot. Once it takes shape to your foot, it fits you much better. The other thing too is the adjustability. Uh, certain types of shoes, they may not cinch up as tight on your foot. You have to consider how adjustable it is. If you're wearing thicker socks, can you let it out to accommodate that? Or if you're wearing thinner socks, can you really tighten it up enough that it hugs your foot correctly? After that, you've got your waterproofing. Most shoes are lined with Gore-Tex. If you're in hot climates, you really don't want very thick shoes, but you may not even need any waterproofing at all. For us living in Norway, waterproofing is important. So these shoes here, all of these three here on this side, these are all waterproof. Now the next thing is cost. If I'm looking at the cost of these shoes here, these are by far the cheapest. These are the next expensive and then these two here are kind of on, on par with each other. There are, these ones here are roughly five, six hundred dollars and these ones here are roughly four to five hundred dollars around there. Now I didn't pay that, I got them on sale. I'm a thrifty shopper but you have to consider the cost. Is it worth spending a lot of money having the right kind of shoes? So the next thing to consider are your socks. You have to have the right socks. If you're going to be in your shoes all day, make sure that you have good quality woolen socks that aren't just going to wear out really quickly. They have to wick the moisture away from your foot. They have to be able to dry quickly. So you want a wool synthetic mix or you want synthetic socks. Cotton is a no-go. You're going to end up with blisters. You're going to end up with problems on your feet. So wool is by far the best choice or a wool synthetic blend is also really good. So with that out the way, if we're looking at spending a lot of money on a bunch of shoes like this or a pair of shoes, then one of the things that we want to do is we want to understand how to make those shoes last a long time. So here are some rules. When you wet your shoes, make sure you dry them out. Don't put on damp shoes again the next day and wear them around. The, the glue will let go and the materials will soften over time if you do that and you'll end up destroying your shoes. The next thing is that when you dirty them, you come back with muddy shoes, make sure that you clean them, maintain them, keep them in good order and make sure that you waterproof them when they dry out and have been cleaned. After you've gotten them wet, waterproof them again uh, when they dry. After that, I have to recommend that you use quality laces. Quality laces make a big, big difference because if you have laces that never cinch up really well, 
the shoe will end up loose on your foot and that, that um, movement in the materials in your foot sliding around, that will end up putting a lot of pressure where you have the joints and the glue and the stitching and the stitching will let go over time. And then after that, as soon as you see that your shoes are damaged, make sure that you repair them. So in a prep kind of environment, make sure that you have good quality contact cement, have a good quality awl and, and thick needles and thread so that you can do those repairs on your shoes yourself. Absolutely recommended. You need to make sure that you've got those things to repair your shoes if and when they get damaged. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to, to like, share, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It's really important to us. This information is very handy for those of, of us who like to be prepared. Thanks for joining me in the video, and I'll catch you guys again in the next one. Take care, guys. See ya.